The Karate Kid 2010 Saga Karate The original Karate Kid film saga starring Ralph Macchio's The Let concluded in the late 80s with the disappointing third outing that was only enjoyable thanks to some deliciously hammy acting from its chief villain. Time moved on, and in the early 90s a fourth installment attempted to kickstart, pun intended, the franchise again this time with a young Hillary Swank as the lead. It failed. Then came the 2010 reboot, and although fairly enjoyable in its own right, it didn't do well enough to garner any more sequels. And so the franchise lay dormant once more Cobra Kai picks up some 30 years after the All Valley Under-18 Karate Tournament of the first movie concluded, with Macchio's Daniel LaRusso besting his final opponent Johnny Lawrence. Smartly and unexpectedly, the premise of the show flips the premise of the original movie on its head. Rather than following a grown-up 50, something Daniel would brought back into this world we learn that Johnny's life has been miserable in the intervening years since his defeat. He's lost his place in the world, become an alcoholic, and is estranged from his teen son Robbie. Worse is that Johnny's tormented by Daniel on corny TV commercials and on billboards around town. However, a chance encounter with bullied young neighbor Miguel eventually encourages him to restore the Cobra Kai dojo of the show's title and teach today's pansy-ass generation a few lessons. It would be fair to say that William Zenka isn't exactly a hugely known actor having only starred in a handful of lesser-known films and TV over the years since the original film, but he more than proves himself as the lead of the show. He shapes his bully caricature from the first movie into a three-dimensional character, with nuance and depth. Watching his transformation into unlikely new sensei is a joy and you will find yourself rooting for him, despite his questionable, but frequently hilarious methods, he's not exactly a poster child for the PC crowd. The series naturally catches up with Daniel, who has become a successful and wealthy car salesman. He too is shown to be a flawed individual. He's turned his karate victory and teachings into little more than marketing gimmicks, and neglected some of the core values taught to him by his old sensei and father figure Miyagi, the late Pat Morita. But, over the course of the run, Daniel rediscovers what he's been missing in this life. Unlike the original movies, the show realizes that the world can't always be viewed in just black and white, as a good and evil type of place. Johnny and Daniel are shown here in both lights and many shades in between. In one brilliant scene laid on in the run, Johnny retells the events from his side where he views Daniel as the bully of the first film, and no doubt enough to a certain viral YouTube video. But perhaps most fun is seeing Johnny and Daniel finding some common ground, for instance in an unintentional carpool karaoke session that eventually leads to them drunk in a bar, reminiscing on old times. But it's not just the oldies here, there's a whole new young cast bringing the show up to date with more modern takes. Zola Marigna is endearing as Miguel Diaz, essentially one of the new karate kids, but this time under Johnny's tutelage. Tanner Buchanan's Robbie Keane, by contrast, starts the show in an utterly contemptible place, but soon grows into much more. Meanwhile, Mary Mouser Samantha, Daniel's daughter, is caught in the middle of it all. There's also some good support from the other supporting younger cast, not to mention Courtney Hengar as Daniel's wife and voice at reason Amanda LaRusso. Of course, you'd expect a show like this to feature some action and while it's not overly frequent, when it's done, it's done well enough. The fighting choreography isn't exactly up to the standard of shows like Daredevil or Into the Badlands, but it's competent and much better than the original movies. A school canteen scene, and the final tournament being notable highlights. Cobra Kai is the kick-ass surprise of summer. Across its 10 episodes, the show is peppered with many 80s nostalgic moments, but also offers plenty of good humor and it is genuinely moving.